In the previous lecture, we discussed a concept known as the pointing vector. So we said that the pointing vector given by a capital S gives us the power per unit area that is transported by an electromagnetic wave as it propagates through empty space. Now, we were able to derive three different equations that give us the magnitude of the pointing vector. So, the magnitude of the pointing vector S is equal to, we have epsilon naught multiplied by C multiplied by E squared. This is equal to the product of C multiplied by B squared divided by mu naught. And this is equal to the product of E and B divided by mu naught, where mu naught, c and epsilon naught are constants, and E and B are the electric and magnetic fields of our electromagnetic wave at some given moment in time. Now, what exactly do these equations give us? Well, these three equations essentially give us the power per area that is transported by our electromagnetic wave at some given moment in time. So these equations essentially give us the instantaneous value of the pointing vector. Now, it is often useful, however, to know the average power per area over some extended interval of time. So to calculate this average power per area, which as we'll see in just a moment is known as the intensity of the electromagnetic wave, let's recall what an electromagnetic wave is. So an electromagnetic wave essentially consists of alternating electric and magnetic fields as shown in the following diagram. So let's suppose we have an electromagnetic wave that is propagating along the x-axis in the positive direction as shown in this diagram. So we see that the green regions are the electric field regions that are propagating along the y-axis and the blue regions are the magnetic field regions that are moving, that are propagating along the z-axis. Now, since the electric and magnetic fields are usually assumed to be sinusoidal, we can define the peak and root mean square electric and magnetic fields of our electromagnetic waves in the same exact way as we define the peak and root mean square voltage and electric current. So we have the following two equations. So we see that the average of the square of the electric field is equal to the peak or maximum electric field squared divided by 2. And likewise, the average of the square of the magnetic field B is equal to the square of the peak magnetic field, also known as the maximum magnetic field field divided by 2. So once again, B naught symbolizes the maximum or the peak value of the magnetic field. So if we examine this diagram, we see that the peak or maximum magnetic field is reached at these two points. In the same exact way, the maximum electric field, also known as the peak electric field, is given by E naught. And these values are obtained at these two positions on the following electromagnetic wave. So now we are ready to calculate the average power per area. So the average power per area is equal to, so we essentially take these three equations and we replace with these. So let's begin with this one. So we know 
epsilon naught multiplied by c multiplied by e squared gives us the instantaneous magnitude of the pointing vector. Now the average value is given by taking epsilon naught, multiplying it by c, and multiplying that by our e naught squared divided by 2. And this is the same thing as c multiplied by b naught multi uh, squared divided by 2 multiplied by mu naught. And this is the same thing as simply multiplying our E naught, the maximum magnetic field, and our, or our E naught, the maximum electric field, and B naught, the maximum magnetic field, dividing that by 2 multiplied by mu naught. So this quantity, as with the bar symbol on top, is the magnitude of the pointing vector on average. And it is commonly known as the intensity of the electromagnetic wave. That is the average power that is transformed or transferred per unit area by our electromagnetic wave. Now, Recall that we can relate our maximum magnetic field and maximum electric field to the root mean square magnetic field and the root mean square electric field via the following equations. So E naught, the peak electric field is equal to the product of the square root of 2 and the root mean square electric field. And likewise, B naught, the peak magnetic field is equal to the product of the square root of 2 and our root mean square magnetic field. So if we take the following equation and we replace E naught with this and B naught with this, we get the following result. So the square root of 2 multiplied by the square root of 2 gives us 2. We have 2 appearing on top and bottom, so the 2's will cancel, and we're simply left with our intensity of the electromagnetic wave is equal to the product of the root mean square electric field and the root mean square magnetic field divided by mu naught, our constant. So. In the next lecture, we're essentially going to apply this concept and we're going to solve an example using the intensity of electromagnetic waves. So once again, the intensity of an electromagnetic wave is defined as the average power that is transported per area by an electromagnetic wave.